To create a project plan file, you need to navigate to the Files section in Microsoft Teams and select New Excel Workflow. I'm going to give it a name Marketing Project Plan and click the Create button. From the standpoint of Microsoft Teams, we just created Microsoft Excel document, so all the features of Excel are present and available to us. I'm going to zoom in by using the plus sign in the bottom right corner. In the first step, we will define columns for the project plan. Column A will be ID column. This will be a unique ID for each task in the project plan. Column B will define a phase, and we will have seven phases in the project. Initiation, POC for proof of concept, design, build, test, launch, and support. Column C will contain tasks for the project. Column D will define a status, and in the statuses, we will have not started, in progress, delayed, or completed. Column E will define who this task is assigned to on our project team. Column F will contain the start date for the task, and column G will contain the end date. Column H will contain hourly rate for the resource, and column I will contain units of measure, for example, hours. So this way, we can calculate the cost by multiplying rate by the hours. Column J will contain estimated cost, and column K will contain actual cost for the task. To make the document look more professional, we will highlight the role, make it bold, and we will assign a different background color. We will also expand column C for the task to allow us for the longer text, and in addition, we will select the values and assign borders for the selected region. We will also rename the name of the sheet in Microsoft Excel document. To do that, I'll double click on the sheet name and assign a new name, Project Plan, to the document. Now let's go ahead and enter our first task. First task's ID will be 1, and the task itself will be to define marketing campaign goals. I'm going to expand the column width a little bit so the task fits into the column. For the phase, this task belongs in initiation phase, but instead of typing initiation, I'm going to create a dropdown which will define all the phases for the project. Because we might create more than one dropdown, I am going to create a new tab just for the dropdowns. To do that, I'm going to click the plus sign zoom in a little bit, and then I am going to type all the phases related to the project. Phases is just the column header. I am going to make it bold, so we can differentiate it. And there are seven different phases that's typically in the project. Initiation, POC, which stands for proof of concept, design phase, build phase, test phase, launch phase, as well as support. To create a dropdown in the main project plan, I am going to select the area which will have the drop downs, navigate to the data tab, click on the data validation, and then select allow values from list. For the source of the list, I am going to navigate to our other tab and select the seven values in which we defined the project phases initiation, POC, design, and etc. and click OK. Now I am able to select the value from the dropdown, and since our first task belongs to initiation phase, I'm going to select initiation and expand the column a little bit so it fits well into the column B. For the statuses in the project, I'm also going to define the dropdown, and now might be a good time to make sure that it focuses only on the dropdowns. I'm going to click on the sheet and type the name. I'm going to give it a name dropdown values which will clearly identify the purpose of this sheet. We will have four different phases in our project plan. I'm going to define a column phases and then enter all the four phases into the project. I'm going to highlight the header of column B into bold, but instead of navigating back to the Home tab and selecting bold, I'm going to use Format Painter. To do that, I'm going to select the phases, navigate back to the Home tab, and select Format Painter. Format Painter ultimately copies the formatting from the cell A1 value, and I'm going to paste the formatting into the phases, into the cell B1. As you can see, it copied the formatting. 
And now I realized that the title of the cell B1 is incorrect. Instead of phases, it should represent statuses. I'm going to quickly change phases in cell B1 into statuses. And now we can go back to the project plan and define the statuses by selecting the range of D2 through D17, going to the data tab, selecting data validation, selecting allow list, and for the source, navigating to the drop down values tab and selecting four drop down values that we've defined for this project. I'm going to click OK, and now I can select the status for the task one, which is not started. I'm going to expand the width of column D by double clicking on the line that separates column D and column E. Now you can see that the value not started completely fits into the cell D2. But what I've noticed is that because of the expanding column widths, now not the entire project plan fits on the screen. I'm going to change the zooming a little bit just to make sure everything fits. In column E, we're going to define the team members working in the project. And you might have guessed it. Instead of typing the names of team members, we'll create another dropdown. To do that, I'm going to navigate to drop down values tab and use column C to define team members. On my team, I'm going to have Fatima Patel, Nicole Jackson, Jason Smith, Ramesh Kumar, Xia Zeng, Anya Saharova, Sumita Reddy, and Mildred Tramas. In addition, I'm going to define a non-existent team member. I will call her TBD, which stands for to be determined. I will use TBD value when I don't know whom to assign. And now let's follow the steps and define the dropdown for team members. I'm going to navigate back to the project plan tab, select column E values from E2 to E17, navigate to the data tab, select data validation, choose allow values from list, and in the source value, when I put cursor there, navigate back to the drop down values and select all of my team members. After clicking OK, I can select the assigned to value. And for this particular task, I'm going to select Sumita Ready. Now is the time to expand column E a little bit so the full value fits, as well as navigate back to the drop down values tab and highlight in bold the team member's header. To do it, I'm going to navigate back to the home tab and select bold. To better define start and end date, we would benefit from having a calendar. There are multiple ways you can get a calendar. What I typically like to do, I like to create a separate tab and call it a calendar. In this tab, we can add the actual calendar, and most of the desktops provide you with the view of the calendar. I am going to navigate to my calendar and use Windows shortcut Windows Shift S to select the calendar for August and paste it into this tab and do exactly the same thing for September's calendar. This way I can always reference the calendar months and specific dates right inside my project plan. Having a calendar handy will help me define the start date for my task as August 2nd, 2021, and this task should be finished by end of the week in August, which would be August 6th. Somita is a very expensive resource, but she does a quality work, and despite the fact that she charges me $100 per hour, I am willing to pay this rate because she does an amazing work. I am going to select the rate of 100 and put it into the column H, which I am going to format as dollar values. And I'm going to select United States currency. I'm estimating that it will take Sumita seven hours to define marketing campaign goals. So my estimated cost can be calculated as multiplication of the rate, which would be value in the cell H2 multiplied by the units, which would be seven hours. And the total estimated cost will be $700. The actual cost we will enter later because it might take less or it might take more for Sumita to complete this work. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and helped you to solve your challenge. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we will make sure to deliver it to you in the future. Also, please make sure to check out our free and premium resources on the website. All you need to do is to go to the menu section and select appropriate options. In addition, 
make sure you don't forget to look at the downloads in the description section of this video. I also recommend that you follow online training for everyone. We are constantly delivering new content to help you solve different problems and challenges. And I also have a favor to ask. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please make sure to share this video with your friends or colleagues to help them solve their challenges. Make sure to leave your questions or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. Thanks for watching.